Hey, so something came up today in a group about uh, bit sizes and the shank sizes of bits. So I'm going to go over here and show you these bits real quick, and then we'll kind of compare them on a failure analysis test over in Fusion 360 to kind of show the difference. So over here on the left, I have the, uh, it's it's in a mono bit, but I just chose these two because they're uh, basically the exact same bit, but this one tapers up to a larger shaft diameter with a quarter inch shank, right? And this one over here has a the, the same size shank as the cutting head at an eighth of an inch, right? So this one over here tapers to a larger shank and this one over here is the same size throughout right so if you go over here to fusion 360 i went ahead and ran a failure analysis on the bit pushing there on the end like a load would and you can see the difference here now they do have the same stick out from the end of that taper down and what is sticking out from the edge of this down there's about a millimeter extra on this one to ensure that uh the full thread engagement would exist and again i modeled these as complete round um, shanks instead of putting all the the grooves in there so you uh, would potentially have even less strength on one with grooves so we're not really going to look at the strength numbers here just comparatively one versus the other and the focus of the stresses right here on that edge of the taper so if we go ahead and um, we, we've got the whole work holder right here which would be your collet squeezing down right so everything beyond that really holds uh, no deflection stresses right but this part here we've applied a stress to it that deflects them downwards these both have the exact same stress applied at the exact same position and the same angles here right so when we go ahead and i'm going to hide some of this so you can see that it reaches a point where the one with the taper has so much more stress focused right there in that tapered edge well beyond what the one th one eighth inch throughout ever feels and and that's significant because that that uh, weakens that point of the bit significantly as it um, spins around rotating while it has the side force it will tend to snap right there at that focused point of the taper so um, some people prefer to buy quarter inch shanked bits because they fit their router already, but yeah, it's highly suggested that um, you don't. Um, if, if, if you're going to be using another size bit that you can purchase a different size collet to fit. One, in this instance, you're going to save 10 bucks a bit. You probably save less with less expensive bits that aren't from tools today, a mono bits, right? Um, but you'll still save some money buying overall smaller bits with a smaller size shank than those with the step up shank size just to fit your existing collet. So in the long run, it's cheaper to buy additional size collets and um, appropriately shanked bits that are the same size shank as your cutter, or at least the minimal um, taper up, right? So if you're going to be using a two millimeter size cutter, I would go with an eighth inch shank unless you have a, um, a real spindle where you can buy ER style collets and you can get those in metric as well. And then you might be able to find cheaper bits in two millimeter throughout. And that would make that a better option than one with the taper to the edge of the bit, you know? Uh, anyway, I hope that uh, makes sense and helps, you know, anybody who's wondering about that. Um, yeah, save money by less expensive bits and, uh, that aren't as likely to break either. Uh, anyway, if you guys are interested in a variety of bits, there'll be a link down in the pinned comment to, um, the speed tools bits with, uh, I think a 10% discount still. If you guys are interested in that, take a look. And uh, if you haven't already hit like on the video, I appreciate it. You guys have a great day. See you later.